You mind about the future. And now, live, unedited, unrehearsed, and unapologetic, brought to you by Imperial Fire Alarm and Security, securing your world straight off the ledge. It's JD and Smitty. This is the Ledge Radio Show with JD and Smitty on 96K Rock, the first and best political talk show on K Rock. Phone lines are open, 277-9600, or for the viewers around the world on the Ledge Cam, 239-775-9600. Thanks to Tripod Billy, we are streaming live video at theledgeradioshow.com. You can also give us a like at facebook.com uh, forward slash theledgeradioshow. And uh, special thanks to our in-studio producer, Sick Rick. What's up, Smitty? What's up, Southwest Florida? Uh, I'd first like to thank our current uh, title sponsor, Imperial Fire Alarm and Security. Uh, for all your fire alarm needs, security needs, CCTV, um, access control, uh, you can call Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today at 239-288-6482. That's 239-288-6482. The technicians are standing by. I also want to be the first to say that uh, we are moving on up. Um, next week, our shows, our show will be moving to uh, 10 a.m. to noon, prime time on Saturday. So set your alarm clocks and get up and call in. And I, I really have to... Uh, give a big thank you to we have a new title sponsor coming in uh, at least for the first hour of the show she's huge uh thanks to Stuart duncan with duncan diamonds for coming on board and uh starting with us next week it's been a great uh, lift with us and i want to thank him personally well thanks mitty um you know this morning we just uh you know everybody's kind of tuning into the weather channel to see what's going on here in southwest florida we do have the uh hurricane alert hurricane <laughs> alert they, they do have the hurricane alerts out um <clears throat> you know Right now, I don't know. The, the projections are showing it. You know, they're showing the eye going, kind of skirting the uh, west coast of Florida, um, with a possible impact into the Panhandle. But uh, it's still probably too early to tell. I mean, the, the storm's a, a large side storm. So even though you see the cone on the Weather Channel uh, showing it just to the just to the west of the Florida of Florida, you know, the outer bands and the the storm surge is going to be on our side. So you know, we're going to get a lot of that rain, you know, the wind, uh, lightning, tornadoes that typically spawn off of there. So, you know, if you haven't got your stuff uh, battened down, get it done today. Uh, make sure you get your your cars filled up with fuel, water, get, you know, yeah, water, uh, gas cans, because for those of you like me who live on a well, you know, if you, if you lose power, you lose your water. So make sure that uh, you've at least got the means to uh, yeah. use a generator, have friends that have a generator just in case. Um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that Plug into your neighbor's, neighbor's <clears throat> generator if you don't have one. Absolutely, absolutely. Sneak a cord over. Yeah, do that uh, <laughs> if you have to. But um, you know, sick Rick and I were talking before the show started. You know, and he he was uh, you know kind of saying that this looks similar to Hurricane Charlie a few years ago. Yep. You know, and, and if if they didn't for think those, they didn't think it was going to come by uh -huh. us at all. For those of you that remember, Hurricane Charlie was coming up the West Coast, and it was a Category Two, and you know, I, I didn't even have any shutters up at the time because that's like hurricane party weather right there. Uh, if you're if you're from Florida, and I'm I'm from Florida, I've been through multiple hurricanes, and uh, you know there are some that we will leave, you know, and, and evacuate, but there's some that we didn't. And with Hurricane Charlie coming up, uh, it turned at the last minute. I mean, yeah, it, tur it, it turned due east right into Punta Gorda, and and at the same time went from a Category Two to a Category Four in in the same in about two three hours. Uh, it, it seemed to me like it was shorter than that because that's when I'm scrambling around outside and get you know get all the shutters and put them up on the uh, sure. windows, and um, you know we we definitely had. We we got in the closet, man. We had to hide in the closet with mattress and sure. I, mean, I was I was worried for that that train, you know, the train sound. That's what you usually sleep though in the closet <clears> with a mattress, right? Well, at least I <laughs> at least I have come out of the closet. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, it's funny because when I first got here in '95, um, I was I was not I'm not a Florida guy. So all of a sudden I, I start aware. I start hear the the storms coming, and of course I was panicking. I was like, oh here it comes, you know, I'm batting down the hatches. I game went out, over. I, yeah, game, game over, over, man. I got my Bible out, started praying. <laughs> you know, I started putting boards on the window. I started getting stacks of water. I'm doing everything they tell I me to do. I noticed you still got boards on your windows. I still do, and, and, and I'm taking them down <laughs> <laughs> with my Christmas lights out back. I know. And then um of course I got all done, and then so I'm all happy with myself. It took two days to, to, to batten down the hatch and, and look around. No, none no. of my neighbors had anything. 
<laughs> I looked like I was like, foreclosed on. I was like, what's going on here? You know, and then he said, oh, it's just a, just a storm, you know, Category 1. You know, we should have we got your boy Hildreth on the line to uh, talk about uh, some, of, some of the storm force stuff that does happen. I mean, the, one of the big problems with hurricanes, you know, you can – you can try to protect your house as much as you can, but once, if you get a large blowout, like in your garage door or something like that, sure. you get that updraft uh, from the wind blowing real hard, and that literally can, can unseat your roof. Sure. Especially if it was built before, if your house was built before some of the newer hurricane codes. And even the hurricane codes, I mean, they're, they're you know, they, they have really good intentions, and I'm sure they'll hold up to a lot of uh, wind. I don't put a lot of faith in it against Mother Nature because. Sure. You know, it's just, I mean. You, you mean you don't trust that little hurricane strap to the. <laughs> <laughs> they got a lot of straps. When I had my three point inspection, the guy says, oh, Three no, point? Yeah, well, whatever it is, the litigation, wind litigation. Mid- mitigation. Yeah, that too. And, and then he had the strap around the truss, and he says, no, it has to be tied into the footer. He didn't put and, a strap on? And uh, he had a strap on. Okay. And uh, actually, actually uh, he said it worked. It worked. And I said, really? And I looked at that, and I just, it's hard to believe. Like you said, you look at well, that, because and you they, think, they put this those is going to hold every, the roof on? They put them on every truss, though. Yeah. And there's like 75 nails in those. Yeah. So as long as your wood's not all eaten up with uh, termites like mine is, I think you'd be fine. Yeah. So, yeah, just everybody just, uh, you know, keep keep tuned into your weather uh, weather station. Yeah, be safe. Grab you a know, beer. Batteries. <laughs> yeah, lots of beer. A lot of beer. Water, too. Water, too. I mean, beer is made out of water, but I would definitely get some water just in case. I, I'm, I'm not going to suggest a run on the Walmart water right now, but if you don't I, have any, get some. Yeah, I went to the dollar store last night and got my water, so I'm good. Was it a dollar? Yeah. Was no, it a dollar no, for a case or a dollar piece? I put piece? a bunch of stuff in there. I don't know what it was. I just went to the dollar store. And actually, I, I met Mr. Jim Roach. He was down the street there. Did you? And, and I met Mr. Jim Roach, and I gave him my, our card, and I put an invitation. And Jim to Roach is the uh, the lone Democrat uh, yep. running against uh, Trey. Trey Radel. Now, I don't know if there's any independents in this race still. But I don't think so. The one gentleman, uh, Smith, he may still be in the race as an independent. But uh, we'll, we'll get uh, we'll get Jim and Trey on to yeah, do a little debate in the studio. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. You know, the the only uh, you know the big Southwest Florida congressional debate. Yep. But um, all right, phone lines to call in two seven seven ninety six hundred seven seven five ninety six hundred. Uh, we're gonna get into something. I know we've got. Well, before we get into the politics, uh, as you we got something we, good on sports. Well, I'm just I was I was really perturbed this week by the Lance spell, Lance Armstrong thing. Spell that. What's I'm that? not gonna spell. Bertur- it. Was that B? Perturbed. Yeah, perturbed. I was perturbed. And Lance just, Armstrong just take some medicine for that. Is facing. Uh, you know, well, he got banned for life for cycling now because they they went back after <clears> six <throat> seven years of him. You mean if they find him riding on the side of the road in Lee County, they're gonna kick him off his bike without a helmet? That's right. He's Jeez. done. So uh, wow, helmet law. So anyhow, they 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 took away all his all his accolades and all his medals and banned him and he just basically well, it, it, threw up his hands and said i'm done i'm not going to fight you anymore isn't that you know? it wasn't that the recommendation from the usada i mean do they actually do you think they have the power to literally strip him of his medals i guess somebody did because they tried to but you know he, he they're gonna does, come to his house and take him away six seven years i think it's i think it might be six years after he ran his last race over there the tour de france they now they're testing him. He's he's been tested, has he as he said it was like five times. Five, six, seven hundred times after every race they test him and they test him all year long and suddenly now he's He's dirty, so they're going to take all his. I'll tell you what it is. It's just a witch hunt against the Americans, and I'll say it. You I'll think say so? It. I do. I, I, you know, the French don't don't like us that much over there, and and they've been wanting to rule the roost over there with this biking biking thing. Bikling? Yeah, bikling. Bic- bicycling? Yeah, the bikling, because that's what I'm going to call for now, the bikling thing. Yeah, I never really watched it until it's, it's until Lance Armstrong won like three or four times, and I thought, well, this might be pretty Man, cool. this but, guy's been through everything. The, Cancer? I, I know, testicular, <laughs> brain, whatever I mean, he said. I mean, I, then he and they're going to say, well, now you're, you're dirty. I mean, you know what he said? I'm done with it. I'm not I'm even going to fight it anymore, I, so forget it. I think I think he should have been allowed to have steroids just because of the cancer thing. Yeah, can, Anything to help him. It's, it's ridiculous, and, and you know now they're just going to witch hunt you him. You think the French don't like us? No, I don't think that we're their fans. You know, Sh- shouldn't they? Shouldn't they like us? I mean, we did liberate them. I mean, that that was a good thing to do. Yeah, they can go to Omaha Beach and remember, <clears throat> I guess. Maybe so. But, well, so now here's the deal, though. The guy has seven world championships. He's got Olympic medals from this. Are they going to come to his house and take these medals? I'd say come and get them. That's what I would him. say too. I would say I'm I'd get all steroided up like a big monster. Like, come on in, come on in, Arr, come on. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I got all my steroid buddies that run that team with me. Go on all the TV shows and wear all your medal still. I still got them. I still got them. <laughs> Biatches, what's going on? He's just got them all draped around. What's he's, going on? He's going to die from I gold. Got him. You can't take them. <laughs> nice. Well, that, that's funny, man. Well, what what's up with uh, Nike? You told me Nike was going to stick by. They're his still side. sticking by him. They're 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 saying, hey, you know what? We're supporting our guy, 
And, and kudos to Nike, man. They're saying, we don't care what you guys say. We're tired of this. I mean, how many years can you go? How many, uh, you know, what, 7, 10, 15 years? And finally they pull something out of the hat and say, aha, your creatine level was 2.8 centimeters more than it should have been. I mean, it's ridiculous. Do they measure creatine in centimeters now? I don't know how they measure it. I don't take it. Like I'm not buff dip? like you. Is that like a, I, I appreciate that. I, I, I am buff. I, I, I know you're cut. Buff like, buff like a teddy bear. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you, got a, you got a size. It's called round. Uh, uh, round, round, is, <laughs> round is a shape. Shape, buddy okay it's a size I'm in too. shape trust me <laughs> I'm, I'm in shape Brown well, you're is a shape you're a shape all right you are in shape well so this is what lance said he says i've been dealing with claims that i cheated and had an unfair advantage in winning my seven tours since 99 mm. so ever since 99 they've been on him for it uh. they, they've not trusted him the toll this has taken on my family and my work for the foundation uh which leads him to where he is today he's finished with this nonsense so he just threw in the towel said, screw it. I'm not fighting this no more. I've won. I know I won. My my teammates know I won. The competitors I beat know I won. And now you're going to try to do this? That's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, man. Nah, I don't care either because Lance is my hero. I like Lance. He's done good. Is he your hero? I, lo I love Lance Armstrong. He's, he's great, man. I love that story. His whole life story is amazing. It is. So. You know, I didn't even know he had all the cancer until I saw that movie uh, Dodgeball. Yeah. And he, he's, he's sitting there with uh, Vince Vaughn, you know, at the, at the bar. Vince Vaughn just throwing in the towel. He's going to quit his dodgeball career over, you know, whatever it was. They actually came and gave him last rites in the hospital when he was he was that ill. Really? Yeah, and they were said this was going to be it, and it was like two times they did that, and then he bounced back. So I, I did see that in the story that, that the chemo they gave him was, like, so strong that, that 50% of people could not have survived the chemo treatment. I know. That's that's amazing. He's a fighter, though. That is amazing. Man. Hopefully, um, you know, hopefully he'll live a, a long and prosperous life, um, you know, even after this issue. And, and hopefully, you know, I, I ho I'd like to see our government stand behind him because uh, you know how Congress likes to weigh in and you know go after people on steroids and baseball and whatever else, like I, Roger I, Clemens. All the guys, they, you know, there's probably ten or twelve of them, fifteen of them that they've come after. Roger dodged. Roger said, "I'm." Uh, they came back and said, "Not guilty with Roger." And, that's true. And now he's pitching again. What? He's pitching. Pitching what? He, he's going to like a, a non-sanctioned uh, league and uh, you know baseball league, and he's going to be pitching. Really? And uh, he's he's going to be. Didn't uh, you tell me about some guy the other day? Sixty-five. Year I did. Old guy I saw it on the news real quick. It was a sixty-five-year-old guy. It was, uh, Bill Lee, I believe his name was, and he used to pitch for the Montreal Expos, I believe. And I'm getting recall from this thing, trying to remember. And he that sixty-five. Ain't work out well. And he um he pitched like a, a no hitter or something like that. Sick Rick, you remember, remember that? that? Did you hear anything about this? Then it didn't yeah, happen. It was, it, Smitty's making this up. Yeah, I'm making it up. <laughs> and there's UFOs on the beach too. <laughs> hey, um, did you hear about the ICE agents? I C E. Let's hear it. The uh, Sue and the Obama administration, because um, the Obama administration won't let them do their jobs. Is it all of them or just one guy? No, there's a group of there's a group of ten of them. Uh, it says uh, disgruntled employees. <clears throat> yeah, if anybody's got any information on this, feel free to give us a call. Uh, 277-9600-775-9600. Got a um, group of immigration agents filed a lawsuit against the Obama administration Thursday, saying they're sick of being told not to do their jobs. The feeling intensified by the president's new non-deportation policy and a previous memo directing them not to arrest certain illegal immigrants. That, that well, how, how is that even possible? I, I don't know. That's this. It's it, disturbing. It's disturbing, and um, this issue has been going on for a while down there on the border. Somebody has to make a solid call, and either they're going to build the dang wall or not. Or I mean, stop. we already gave them the specs for it. We yeah, we gave them the specs for many it. times. Many times we told them who to build it, right. who to design it. Right. I'm sure. I'm sure you can get the money to Halliburton, and they'll build build it. So. They would build it. <laughs> so a total of ten immigration uh, and custom enforcement agents. That's ICE. I see. I see. Um, filed the lawsuit in federal court to try to do away with both initiatives. This is uh, from the Washington Times to give them credit for the story. Sure. Uh, since taking office, Obama has taken drastic measures to loosen the nation's immigration laws. In addition to the president's new executive order that protects younger illegal aliens from deportation, the administration has shut down numerous Border Patrol stations, ended a crucial ICE program that allowed law local law enforcement agencies to enforce federal immigration law, and actually instructed Border Patrol agents not to make arrests. Well, the Border Patrol agent thing not to make arrests is an issue, but you know you have to be you have to be honest that this this. Obama administration, they took that position, and they stole the thunder from Rubio. He was originally wanted to, to bring this out, and he wanted to sign this law. And he was the one who really originally came up with the concept, and they designed it, and they were going to use it to GOP, but he beat them to the punch, and he exploited it, and he got his foot in the door. And now, of course, it's, uh, it's bad for him. I don't think Rubio wanted the entire DREAM Act the way Obama's got it written. 
just what, between what, you and me. What, did you talk to Rubio personally? No, but you know what we'll do? We can get Rubio on. <laughs> I wish you would. We will, though. I wish you Let would. Let me finish with my story. Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Go. So the 10 U.S. ICE agents and deportation officers said Obama's policies have put them behind a, a, between a rock and a hard place. Mm-hmm. They can either enforce the law and be reprimanded by their superiors or fail to enforce the law, which would violate their oath of service, which is called like an oath keeper. Okay. So, in fact, in 96, the law requires the agents to demand proof. 1996, there's a law on the books requires them to demand proof of legal status from individuals they suspect are in the country illegally. That's their job. But they're not even allowed to ask. And if they arrest someone, they got to turn them back over. Well, it seems like a legitimate gripe. I, mean, I, I would say so. <laughs> I mean, I don't think anybody wants illegal aliens just coming over the border. Well, you know, I, I'm I don't, sure some do. But I think you know. the big, the bigger issue is is when you get into the the, the meat of it. When you got like um, illegals that have done, you know, they're committing crimes, and and you know, then you got to try to prosecute them, and then what do you do with them? You know, and then then of course they come over here and they have have uh, kids. You know, that's a whole yeah. issue. Then they have their health insurance, which is another whole issue. And it's just been a it's been a muck all the way around. And, well, these and, guys these guys hired a high profile attorney, uh, Chris Kobach. Um, he's also Secretary of State in Kansas and a staunch promoter of the Arizona immigration law. So he's representing them. Uh, he he basically says ICE is at a point now where agents are being told to break federal law. They're pretty much told that any illegal alien under age 31 is going to be let go. You can imagine these law enforcement officers are being put in a horrible position. Mm. Uh, would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, I, mean, I know we don't always tough. agree on everything, but no, we, but that, but we seem would, to agree most of the time on immigration, at least. Yeah, that's that's getting out of control, and nobody wants <clears throat> to step up and do their their part. I mean, Republicans it's been that don't. Way for the Democrats, yes, for, yeah, for, for years. For years. It's, not, it's not Obama's fault that this is like uh, this. Oh no, but, it's, it's it, this but is he a seems nasty to have been mess. adding. He seems to have added gasoline to the fire well, by doing it, this. It, well, in your mind, he does, but you know. Well, by creating a policy like that, would you not consider it? I could. Well, you know, somebody has to make a call, take it to the Supreme Court, like they do everything else, and they'll decide it. Not everything should go there this should be an easy common sense judgment call i believe it should be the state's call for that well this listen to this one of the instance instances where these uh agents have cited as being one of the major reasons why they've they've uh uh, got this lawsuit um was that uh they picked up an illegal alien from el paso county jail who had assaulted the agent Mm -hmm. assaulted a second agent after he uh after he was you know broke broke free or got free or whatever broke free broke free then here's the kicker. When they brought the man to ICE's processing center, the so-called uh, supervisors told Martin that the uh, illegal alien had to be released to comply with the Obama administration's new policies, not the president's DREAM Act, but a previous memo from ICE director John Morton, who instructed agents only to give priority to criminals and repeat offenders. Keep in mind, assaulting a federal officer is a federal crime, punishable by up to eight years in prison. Maybe, maybe yet, they, yet they got to let him go. That's not uh, the, the guy assaulted a federal officer, but they got to let him go. Well, if a supervisor told him to let him go, then we should talk to the supervisor. Maybe we'll get him on the phone. Supervisor was citing an, an a directive directly from Obama. Well, that that that's what that's what you're saying. So well, I'm, I'm hearing you. Well, let me let me finish with this now. I actually got this in an email yesterday, uh, and I looked it up on uh, Smitty's Wikipedia page for mm, accuracy. You love it. Okay. So far, it's good. That and Google. <laughs> so far, it's good. I'm 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 pretty uh, sure that this is. You a, should be Encyclopedia. Now it's Wikipedia. It used to be encyclopedia. <laughs> well, the Wikipedia is the online. I think you can still get like the Britannica <laughs> can on there. You, can you get online by Britannica? I would imagine you could. All right, so check this out. What did Presidents Hoover, Truman, and Eisenhower have in common? I don't know. You, you don't they, know. They all had hookers. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But that wasn't in the story. So I'm going to continue on with the story. Uh, back during the Great Depression, Herbert Hoover ordered the deportation of all illegal aliens in order, in order to make jobs available to American citizens that desperately needed work. Did you know that? I did read that somewhere. Okay. Harry Truman deported over 2 million illegal aliens after World War II to create jobs for returning veterans. You remember that? No, I wasn't there, but I do remember hearing it. You had to be around back then. I wasn't born yet. This is more your time. Here we go. This is you right here. Okay, let's hear it. In 1954, were you you around then? No, I wasn't. Go ahead. Let's try. Dwight Eisenhower deported 13 million Mexicans. The program was called... don't laugh. Okay. Okay. I didn't come up with this. Okay. Just prefacing. Okay. okay. Get ready. I didn't come up with it. Dun, All right. This, but this dun. might be where this term came from. Let's hear it. Operation Wetback. It was done so nice. World War II and Korean veterans that is, would that have is a better chance of jobs. politically correct as you can get. Dude, I'm quoting <laughs> no, you. No, I'm no. I'm I just, looked uh, it up online. It was absolutely true. <laughs> Oper- it was. It, that's what it was called. And, but it was so that. Uh, stay, stay tuned for Wetback too. Listen, so Korean veterans would have a better chance at jobs. It took two years, but they they did deport them. Now, if they could deport the illegals back then, they could surely do it today. 
If you have doubts about the veracity of this information, you can also look it up. Look up uh, Operation Wetback on your browser, and you will find the same information at Smitty's Wikipedia page. Absolutely. And uh, you, you might ask, can't they do this today? Actually, the answer is quite simple. Hoover, Truman, and Eisenhower were men of honor who loved their country, not untrustworthy politicians looking for votes. Remember this. Don't forget to pay your taxes because 12 to 20 million illegal aliens are depending on you daily. Well, well let, me, let me say something. You know, back then, the politicians were much different than they are today. Okay, back then it was about getting something done in this country. They ain't getting it done now, are they? Back then, people would say, "Okay, let's have this argument, let's debate it vigorously, let's sit down, let's hammer this thing out, and let's get it done." It used to be about coming to a resolve, to actually getting something done in this country. Not anymore. Now it's posturing, it's it's provoking, it's trashing, divisiveness. It's it's, it's, it's all that, and it's gotten really, really ugly. I agree. And it's gotten to the point where now people are just getting, you know, they're just saying, "Hey, I'm." not even going to vote i've talked to people all week and they go i, I said do you vote and they go no no you know, do you want to vote now what does it matter what and then they're matter? getting to that point right. where they're getting sick and tired of it and the, the politicians have to put more have to put more you know emphasis on getting something done i, I agree buddy and not about what they're about you hey, know listen. look at me look at me i'm running for this hey calm down over there let's take a break BS. We're, we're running uh we're running late here all right we'll take a quick we'll break. take a break when we get back uh, call 277 9600 we'll be right back Zito and Gary. The big gap man, Sean White, two-time Olympic gold medalist, uh, snowboarding. I'm sure the uh, general manager never heard of him or I, I hates him or something, but it seems like everybody that we get, we get excited about. Hey, we get this person. I go, the hell is that? Don't like him. Who the hell is that, Zito? Get him off my radio station. Yep, stop playing that crap. So do more like Stan and Haney. Play some, uh, talk about Connie Francis, will you? Throw some Eddie Rabbit on him. Sing along. <laughs> Zito and Gary on 96 K-Rock. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Why should you want to know? Don't you mind about the future? J.D. and Smitty on 96K Rock. The phone numbers are 239-277-9600 or 775-9600. You can check out our live stream at theledgeradioshow.com. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash theledgeradioshow. If you'd like to advertise during this show or any future show, uh, for our new primetime slot every Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon starting next week, you can visit the website and contact us for details. We still need a title sponsor for the second hour. Uh, great uh, rates while they last. Get in while the getting's good. Smitty, what you got, man? Anything? Well, I was going to talk about um, Paul Ryan. Before we get to that, can I do a little funny story? Yeah, do a funny story for us. All right, Sick Rick, I know i got some audio queued up over there, the uh, the, the woman that uh, that defended her son. I just want to preface this first. Um we got a story came out of Memphis, uh, Memphis area mother. She's actually facing aggravated assault charges after attacking her son's little league football coach with a baseball bat. According to the no nonsense mother, the coach had molested her sons. Now it's allegedly. And upon seeing him, she simply couldn't control herself. Sick Rick. If you got that audio queued up, uh, bring it to us please tonight's top story i did it for my kids that is what the mother accused of beating her son's football coach has to say tonight 27 year old lakeisha richmond made her first court appearance today facing an assault charge she's accused of beating 33 year old tony massey with a baseball bat massey is an assistant coach with the magnolia dolphins Tonight, the head coach of the Little League football team is speaking out. ABC 24's Marcus Holliday reports now the coach still shaken up by the allegations. Now this is the head coach here. The head coach of the Magnolia Dolphins Little League football team says when he found out one of his coaches is accused of sexually assaulting some of his players. It's like my heart just failed. For 18 years, Coach says heart failed. has led him to coach Little League football. There's a lot of young men out here lost, you know what I'm saying? They need a father figure when they ain't got now. That's why he made it his mission to start a Little League football team in the Magnolia community of South Memphis. My thing is to help young men, not to hurt them. The mother of two help of his players now. says one of his coaches did hurt them. He started making them touch each other and, you know, doing bad things to each other and to him. So Lakeisha Richmond some did something Man, bad to him. I did what I had to do. I put it all in God's hands. Listen to her. Before Richmond put it in God's hands, she put a baseball bat in hers. I didn't oh attend girl. on to do Bring whatever on, I sister. did to him. What she did is grab a baseball bat and hit assistant coach Tony <laughs> Massey in the head, arms, 
And legs. When I seen Busted him, back. I seen my kids Didn't hit him being hurt. No. If the law would have made it there before I did one, no one probably would have happened. <laughs> Richmond is out of jail on a $10,000 <laughs> bond. The judge told her to be back in court with the lawyer September 18th. Very nice. So she should run for president. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what, though. You know, I, I, I listened to the story, and, and you know, and it, and it, I've got small kids. I would do the exact same thing, although I wouldn't bring a bat. Well, because you know, I, I bring a especially gun. Especially now, after we've had nothing but the controversy with the Sandusky thing. Yeah, I mean that's as horrible as it was. So now, um, parents are trigger happy now, man. You know, and if, and if one of these, uh, well, she must have seen this guy come around the corner. Or something. I, she got her bat out of the back of the car and just know, beat his butt. I, I, and he probably deserved it. And but if he didn't do something like that, and she beat him to a pulp. You got to feel for the guy. Go, man! I didn't do any of that, but I'm just saying. Well, there's a lot of that stuff that's going around. It's well, it, you character know, assassination. Sure, we don't it's, we don't want to. You right. know, the guy's not guilty. Right. You know, till after right. the trial. But um, but now she's in court. So it, yeah. let's 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 scenario this this for us. Okay. So what would you do? Two seven seven ninety six hundred. Call in and, and tell us what you would do if that happened to your kid. Well, while we're waiting for those folks, I mean, literally, I would have done the same thing. Now, maybe not with a bat, uh, but. Like she said, when she saw the coach, mm -hmm. that's all she could think of. She saw the coach, and all she saw, Blind rage. she saw her kids getting hurt. So she took up took up a bat and defended her children. Now she's in jail. I don't think that's right. Yeah, I mean, I know realize I realize they got to find out if the guy is guilty first. Okay, but she's in jail. But didn't they release her on bond or anything? Or she's still in jail? I don't know. It, it probably happened a day or two ago. So you know, she may be out on bond. I'm well, sure she's not being held as like some kind of you know felony criminal but at least she didn't kill him i mean she could have beat him to death yeah and she just beat him half to death right so now he's uh he got a good whipping and like old school whipping and what now, would you have done in the old days oh man the but, old but school now, now, if it was a true molester though if it, oh if yeah this really you would old school whipping wouldn't have hand oh, that's no, not enough he would have been disappeared yeah he would have been disappeared you know you down get, the everglades yeah you get one of those calls and go hey we want to talk to you you know, come on down to Joey's bar and we'll have a little talk. <laughs> next thing you know, you just want a free beer. Yeah, you're the one thousand dollars. Next thing you know, you're in the back of the van getting tugged, getting towed down to the Everglades and yeah. with duct tape in your mouth, tied get, up to a tied tree, tied up to a tree, thrown in the in the bushes and saying, "There you go." They, you could, know? they could just slice them a little bit, let some of that blood out, so the alligator can sniff it. What did you say? I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I, you say you did it? What? <laughs> <laughs> too That's late. How, too late now, man. <laughs> what would uh, winner winner chicken dinner? Well, I mean, you're you're. Your boys are grown now, so yeah, they can handle themselves. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, but if something like that happens, oh, that, that's a horrible. I mean, you, you, you try to think that you're a civil, of, a civil person. Think of the you try to think that you want to you want to take a civil action, but it's like walking in and seeing your your spouse with another person yeah. going at it, and it's it's just a rage of passion. And your your, your kids you're into that. and your kids yeah, unless you're into that. And your kids unless are you're holding the camera. Unless you're holding the camera, and your kids are, are special to you, you know, and. To have the think somebody would do that to the, your child is just like I, I told you before. You're right, one step under serial killer. It's serial killer, it, child I, molester. I put I see, and I put it right level with it. You know, for me, if it's my child, it's above serial killer. Do you remember? And I, I think I showed you this years ago. There was a clip, and I don't know how to find it. There was a gentleman Look on in, in Louisiana, in New Orleans. I, I don't know if it was Baton Rouge or where it was, but the the, the father had a son that was a karate um, you know enthusiast, okay. and he took the kid to the class, and with the boy's teacher who was a karate guy took him, and took him for a couple of days, and they finally like kidnapped him, kidnapped him, and oh, and, and molested him, good. and then they finally found the guy, and this is on a, on a clip somewhere, and they finally returned him to Louisiana, and I don't know which parish, and the the, the man was waiting at the airport. With a gun. Oh, no, you know, you should on the phone. The yeah. And as they walked the guy by the phone booth, the guy just turned, shot him point blank, back of the head. Bam, sh shot him right in the back of the head. He put the gun down on the on the. Didn't he phone. get off, though? Yep. And he held his hands up. They arrested him. He had a jury trial. He was on film. Yep. They, on got, film. they got on the shot film. on film. Jury trial. He said, just like you said, his defense was, what would you do if that was your kid? Yep. What would, would you be, do? That would be my closing statement. And, and Louisiana would say, you're right, we let you go. And they actually let Bam. that guy go. That is awesome. That's some justice there. That is that's how justice should be. That is. You know it what is. I mean? I mean that's that's old, old school, school justice, that, baby. That, I, I'm with that's old that's like a that's like the the old testament in the Bible. Eye, eye for an eye. eye. <laughs> yeah. Tooth for a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I got some more uh some more audio. It's an, it's not it's not for this story. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into just a quick little politics. Um, we got time for this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only it's only eight thirty. We got plenty of time. All right, you know how I love Joe Biden, right? 
I know you do as much as Nancy Pelosi. Him and Nancy, there. I know they're, they're, they're your my, top Christmas list. They are. I'm. I'm definitely going to send them something for Christmas. I bet you will. Well, you know, Joe had that recent gaffe. Another one of Joe's gaffes. He's that's. He'll be famous for like the dumbest statements as a VP. Even more than Dan Quayle. I know Dan Quayle had a potato thing, but Joe Biden, every time he opens his mouth, he puts his foot in it. D O E. Potato. What was sad is he argued with the kid. No, no, it's really like this. That's great. You're wrong. I know. Dumb kid. The kid looked at him. If you ever see that video, the kid looks at him and goes, Wow, I'm wrong. And kind of walked away going, Wow. I wonder now, did the teacher correct him at all? No. Did she did she no. fall for it? No. See, that's just it. You gotta think for yourself. You can't be led astray. I gotcha. All right, so listen. Play, play your bit. Listen. Listen. Listen up. All right. Or recently help, Biden, help. but Joe Biden, for the people that aren't listening to politics, he's the vice president currently with Barack Obama. And will be the, the and would probably be the next vice president. I hope not, because I will be looking for land somewhere else. <laughs> Recently, Biden was called out for using his fake black vernacular by uh, telling a mixed audience of uh, different different folks that um, Romney and Ryan would put y'all back in chains. That's what he said. He was he was in the middle of a you know fundraiser or what have you, and he's he's telling the audience that that Romney's going to put them back in chains. Well, Charlie Rangel, who is another guy I can't stand, he's far 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 left liberal. He's been in the Congress for like 21 terms. That's that's a long time in public. 21 term congressman. He must be really good. Well, Charlie Rangel, he's got his own opinion. Sick Rick, I know we got some audio over there. Uh, during the, um, uh, just to preface this, you know, Charlie Rangel, he's a Democrat. He's a Congressional Black Caucus member. He says Vice President Biden's recent chains gaffe was indeed a reference to slavery despite the Obama campaign's denial, because, of course, the campaign is yeah. distancing himself from Joe Biden because uh, he's such a moron. Whatever. But, uh, Let's hear it. He, during a, a Perez uh, Notes radio show, Rangel was asked the question. Sick Rick, if you got it, please let's Congressman, hear it. what do you make of uh, Vice President Biden's comments uh, basically saying that the Republicans are going to put people back in chains? Do you think it was overblown by Republicans? Much ado about nothing. What, how do you think it's been handled? The vice president said, and he's going to put you all in change. Was he talking about slavery? You bet your ass he was. Was he using a vernacular? Yes, he was. Did he think it was cute because there were many in your? Yes, he did. Was it something stupid to say? You bet your life it was stupid. And it is something that if a black had said it, we would have been laughing because we would know that damn hell, they may be beating the hell out of us, but we, they ain't thinking about putting us in any chains. <laughs> so so he actually says that they, they might beat the hell out of us, but they're not going to actually put us in chains. So that that's that's really am amazing for me to see Charlie Rangel, who's so far left, he still gets on guys like Biden. The old, see, Biden's like the old school Democrat. He was trying to be funny. He was trying to work be, out. It didn't work out. He was trying to be clever. He was trying to use some words. But he when you're trying, a moron, don't try to be clever. He was trying to be. He was trying to be funny, and he was misspoke. But he misspoke. Yeah, he misspoke. But that that is that is far behind your boy Todd Aiken. If you want to talk about things that are said that are idiotic and stupid and just uh -huh. ignorant. Todd Aiken is the top of the dog list. Right I don't here. think so. Oh, really? Uh -huh. So you support what he said? Uh, actually, well, I, you I, support. I don't, he said, I don't remember what he said. He said, if it's a legitimate rape, the female body has ways to try to shut <laughs> the whole thing He's down. He's an idiot. He continued. <laughs> he did. <laughs> What an idiot. <laughs> he did not provide an explanation for what constituted legitimate rape. Is he a doctor? Apparently there's, there's a non-legitimate rape and a little legitimate rape. I mean, and you support that. Is there, is, there, is there a different rape, like a club rape or something like that, or a date rape uh, drug? I, that, I mean, they asked him, even Romney and Ryan said, hey, would you please just step down now? Oh, I know they did. And they, The and whole he, Republican Party and, says, dude, you need to get out of this they're, race. They're like, like I, you, walk away from the pipe. Walk away from the pipe, because you're obviously having a problem. Now, you know, I mean, I don't know... In what if you're a woman, if you're a woman, and and sure. and, and I assume you're not. Thank you if, very much. If, you're, if you're a woman, I'd be willing to. You try. have to. You have to think to yourself: Do I want anybody not, associated with this kind of thought? Any any kind of party? And I know your party is about Roe versus Wade, trying to reverse are you, it. Are you still asking me about if I'm a woman? Part or we already passed that? Because no. I'd be I'd be willing to I try. I take your no. word for it. All right, thank you. You know. But but you have to what wonder. Now my party wants to do what? Roe versus reverse Wade. Reverse Roe versus Wade. They're against all that. And this is even though he spoke 
He's an idiot. Even though he spoke, a lot of the right-wing fanatic GOPs think like this. This isn't isolated incident. But GOP he, thinks that, women's, that women a lot can of people, make their body A lot change of people so that, that think like him are on a far fanatic right do think like that. And, and you know, name, I, name someone. I'm not going to name names right now. <laughs> Watch, well, wait, generally speaking. Listen, on the next break, look it up on uh, Wikipedia. On the next Tell me break. what you come up with, all right? <laughs> Is that all you got sure. for it? Oh, that's it, huh? You just dismissed no, that. No, I told. You, I, I said he's an idiot. I think that was a stupid statement. Do I think he needs to drop out? No, I think it was a stupid statement. If that's the case, then Joe Biden should quit as the VP. Obama should quit. Obama should be held for treason. What else do you want? Anything? Well... Is asked an interview by St. Louis a television station about his views on abortion. Uh, Mr. Aiken, six-term uh, member of the Congress who was backed by the Tea Party conservatives, made it clear that his opposition uh, to the practice was nearly absolute, even in instances of rape. Um, and, and and Ryan has, has pretty much supported that as well. But he's he's placated a little to Romney well, saying, you gotta realize. saying, oh, well, if Romney's the president and he wants it right. or he wants to make an exception, I, I'll go along. But even he thinks there's, there's instances. Here's what's of, weird. Here's what's weird. Okay, Ryan is a Catholic. Okay, He's a devout Catholic. Nancy Pelosi says she's a Catholic too, yet she's for abortion. So which Catholic church does she go to, and which one does he go to? I say consistently, it's a woman's choice. It's a woman's it's choice. Not, you know, this abortion is not an issue for me, okay? But I'm it, a conservative, but it's not an issue for me. I figured you can be, you're going to be judged in the end. Whatever you decide to do, I'm not going to tell you. I don't want the federal government telling you. I'm not going to judge yeah, you. But okay? if you vote for people that think like this on this premise, and they're going to re reverse Roe versus Wade, then if you're a woman that's been fighting for over 80 to 100 years to get the, the laws and the rules changed, and now you're going to go back and say, oh, no, we're just going to accept that, then you deserve what you get if you if you vote for that. So you'd rather vote for a communist I'm, party than someone who who just happens to believe in God. Well, I didn't say that that, that he's a communist. I, I didn't say he's a communist. No, but that's the choices you have this well, year. That's your choice. You, that's you the say choice. communist. I don't think anyone's communist here. Well, that's because you got your head in yeah, the sand. Yeah, that's because I think of, of the social problems that we have in this world. And you, of course, don't like Obama. Like I told you before, you, he could come up with a cure for cancer, and you still wouldn't vote for him. Because he didn't do that. Of course not. <laughs> just like he said to me, you didn't build that. I didn't build my business. I'm just not. I'm just not. I'm not with it, man. Well, you know, you, you know what he meant by that. Again, you spin that all the time. But by saying I didn't build it, everybody's involved. Everybody's connected. Whether it was your uh, loan you got, whether you had a GI Bill send you to college, like like uh, Mike's uh, Rick Rick Scott uh -huh. did. Um, all these people are connected. We're all connected. And, and and you take a gaffe like that, and they try to spin it around to, to insult people that work hard. And they, and everybody works hard. Everybody works hard. Everybody gets a, a, a chance to make it in life if somebody gives them a helping hand and helps them and grooms them, educates them, and, and helps them. And that's all he was saying. I mean, you guys make it sound like uh, we're supposed to be mad at, at him because he said, oh, well, you don't work hard or you didn't build your business. Everybody works hard. Everybody All, works hard. Smitty, the, the bottom line is it shows it shows his ideology. He believes in big government, that big government's what built this country, not the individual American citizen. The Americans are what built this country, not big government. And on that note, we're going to go to break so you can't respond, so okay. we'll be right back after this break. <laughs> hey, it's Bubba the Love Sponge. Check me out mornings right here on 96K Rock from 6 till 10 a.m., followed by an all-new lineup of the best damn radio shows, period. Zito and Garrett Middays, Stan and Haney Afternoons, followed by Lex and Terry, the Nick and Artie, the Alex Jones Show, and Man Cow. Check out all the shows on 96krock.com. Take K-Rock everywhere you go by downloading the iRadio Now app on your smartphone or your Android. It's a radio station that has balls to give you exactly what you want. Entertaining radio. 96 k Rock. Talk that rocks. Securing your family, your business, your property. That's what's important in your world. No matter how big, no matter how small. Secure your world with Imperial Fire Alarm and Security today. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security is a local company with hometown service the way it should be. One call to Imperial will align you with the most effective fire alarm security and surveillance systems as well as state-of-the-art wireless monitoring. If you're a property manager or condo association member, ask about Imperial's wireless monitoring systems to replace costly and unreliable phone lines and save your community thousands. From individual homes to large communities, Imperial Fire Alarm and security can secure your world. Don't you think it's time to secure your world? Imperial Fire Alarm and Security Services Lee, Charlotte, and Collier County. Learn more at imperialfiresecurity.com or to schedule your free consultation, call 239-288-6482. Secure your world at imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF200046. When it comes to finding a reliable general contractor, 
you need to pick someone with a solid background and a good reputation. D Squared Construction gives you all that and more. They are family owned and operated and stand behind every project. Quality workmanship and satisfaction to the customer has made them one of the premier contractors in Southwest Florida since 2004. Small residential renovations to large commercial projects, they do it all and they do it all well. Your projects are much too important to trust just anyone. D Squared Construction will come to your house or commercial project and give you a free on-site estimate. Call Kevin Dwyer at 239-561-4108. That's 239-561-4108 for a free consultation and some good sound advice. They won't waste your time or your money. D Squared Construction, when it needs to get done right. Stevie Nicks, the legendary voice of Fleetwood Mac and multi-Grammy-nominated solo artist, comes to Germain Arena September 27th. Tickets go on sale Friday, but all this week, 96K Rock has your Stevie Nicks tickets before you can buy them. Rolling Stone magazine called her the reigning queen of rock and roll. Stevie Nicks at Germain Arena, and we've got your tickets. Just listen to win them before you can buy them on 96K Rock. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Why should you want to know? Don't you mind about the future? Welcome back to Ledge Radio Show with J.D. and Smitty on 96K Rock. Phone numbers are 239-277-9600 or 775-9600. Check out our live stream at theledgeradioshow.com. You can also find us at facebook.com forward slash theledgeradioshow. If you'd like to advertise during the show for our new primetime slot every Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon, visit the website, contact us for details. Uh, we do still need a title sponsor for the second hour. Great rates while they last. Get in while the getting's good. And uh, Sick Rick, I got let me, look, you got the audio queued up. It, there's a little story. Um, I don't even know where it was out of. I, I don't even have the paper in front of me. But... Um, it's not. It's definitely not funny, but let me just preface it. Don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Sick Rick, please. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dana Wagner in for Kim today. And I'm Michelle Velez. A second arrest has been made in the strange attempted robbery that happened at a local Dairy Queen this weekend. Officers say a clerk shot and killed a masked man who was apparently trying to rob the Dairy Queen with a three-foot-long sword. <laughs> 47-year-old Carol ninja. Mateo faces <laughs> charges of battery with a deadly weapon and conspiracy to commit a robbery and burglary. Metro says it was Mateo that dropped off the man who was shot and killed when he attempted to rob the store. Happened a little afternoon yesterday at the Dairy Queen on Maryland Parkway near Sahara. The masked man was shot at least twice and was lying outside the door of the shop when police arrived. The shooting appears to have been in self-defense, but detectives are investigating whether the gun used here was properly registered. No customers were present at the time of the shooting. What do you think about that, Smitty? Would, would you go rob the Dairy Queen with a, with a saber sword? I wouldn't even probably go to Dairy Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Dairy Queen fan myself. I mean, uh, what kind of ice cream you like? I, I try to eat yogurt. I'm into yogurts, man. Yogurt ice cream is my thing. I got to watch, you know, get lean and mean. You know what I mean? I, I can't. You're be, on the right path. Well, I'm trying to follow that, your lead. You know, I can tell from that. I can tell what you're you around side. <laughs> and the, the gun thing is, is is out again. I mean, every week we have something with a gun. Every week. Well, it, here's the here's the the positive note to this. The positive spin on this. Luckily, the clerk had a gun. Because the robber comes in with a freaking sword like a moron yeah, I, and gets shot. I got, we talked last week about the guy with the um, trying to buy beer with the uh, the food stamp, the, the food card, stamp or card, right? Yeah. And and that was an incident. I, I'm I'm somebody who comes in with a, a sword and wants a, a case of beer or something. I'm just giving it to him. I'm not even having a. I'm I, gonna shoot him as they run out the door. Yeah, yeah, th there you go. At least do that. You know? So here's your case of beer. Go ahead, man. Go leave ahead. Ta -ta 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 -ta. and, and then shoot him. Ba -ba -ba. But, yeah, but the gun thing is getting really out of control. And, and if you have been wa watching the news, I guess you heard about the Empire State Building. Um, there was a big shooting there yesterday, leaving two dead and nine injured. Yeah. Um, the guy's name, are you sort of surprised? Jeffrey Johnson. <laughs> hey, before we get to Denver, Any relatives of yours? Before we get to Jeffrey Johnson, let's take the uh, caller on line one. Okay. We've got John from Fort Myers on line one. John, what you got for us, buddy? You're on the Ledge Radio Show. Hey, guys. This is John from Fort Myers. Good show here, man. And I didn't know we had politics on the weekend. I usually listen to uh, the other stations during the week to get my politics. But, sure. On the weekend, there, there's no politics, but you guys are doing a good job. Good. Well, we appreciate that, John. You know, next week, just so everybody knows, we're actually moving to, to a primetime spot on the weekend. We're going from 10 a, uh, to 10 a.m. to noon, starting next week. Uh, so we're going to get two hours out of you guys. Get your fix in then. Yeah, you can get your fix. You know, we're the only local, live, political show on the weekend, period. Um, 
at, at least in the major markets. And uh, I mean, we take live callers, so we appreciate you listening. Yeah, I think you guys are doing a good job. You guys uh, both uh, have a uh, little different uh, opinions, but you guys keep it pretty civil. You're not uh, arguing over each other, and and that's pretty good. I'm a, I'm we, we do that too, some I'm from a, time a, to time. Uh, new, new conservative, I guess. Uh, I voted for Obama. I wasn't really paying attention to politics back then, and in the last few years, I kind of you know realized how I feel about the issues, you know, one by one, and and I call myself a conservative now. Well, good for you, man. You, you've come over. To, you've come over the good side. Yeah. Well, well, you know, I've been paying. I'm in my 30s, and I've been paying taxes for over a decade now, and I, you know, and I see. This guy was saying, uh, I don't know your name, Jeff, but one of the guys was saying, uh, you know, everybody works hard, and it's like this uh, collective idea that, you know, That's we're Smitty. all somehow responsible for each other. That's Smitty. That we should all help each other. And I really don't agree with that because I see a lot of people that just don't put in. That's right, they man. Just don't try. Hey, John. And, and here I am. I work Saturday after Saturday, six days a week to try and get ahead in life. Hey, John. But uh, about the abortion issue, I just want to bring this up. I agree that people should be in charge of, of their bodies to a certain extent, whereas, like, okay, if a woman wants to get a nose job or if she wants to get a, some job. kind of cosmetic surgery, that's your right. You know, if you want to get liposuction, whatever you want to do to your body. Whatever you need to make right. yourself look better, we're good with that. But when your body becomes an apartment, a condominium for another person, <laughs> you should protect that person, you know? I, I think, yes, I think a person becomes a person at the point of conception. Was that an analogy? If there's some kind of soul, if there's some kind of magic inside us, I don't think it enters I the like body this guy. <laughs> when we have, uh, you know, formed organs or whatever. I think Man. it happens, happens as soon as you have your own unique DNA. And, yes, I agree in the, in the point Jeez. of incest. And John! Rape, Stop yeah. talking. You're John, killing walk me. Walk away no, from the caffeine, no, bro. Walk no, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen let, me, let me just say real quick. I can guy, see why you went to the right side on that. The mm -hmm. guy the guy you're, that you that you don't agree with, that would be Smitty. That'd be Smitty's me. on the left. Yeah. He does believe in union, collectivism. He, he I thinks believe, that all I believe that everybody's like together ants. and we all have to help each other. We're all in this for the same cause. You know, and, and there's, you're right. There's, he, a lot of people, a there's a lot of people that don't want to do anything, that sit on the corner on their butts and don't do anything. And there's always going to be those people. But you can't turn around and just just go, oh, well, because he's sitting down there, I I'm, I'm not going to help anybody. Because sooner or later, that person you help may be somebody in your own family. It may be your, you may be your, your cousin or son or daughter. You got a lot of ifs or, in or, there, man. That's the truth. That's the that's the truth. We all have sons and daughters. Most of us, you know, unless you're. What you know, does that kid. got to do with the collectivism ideology? That you we have. all have to help each other. We're all connected. You guys like to be separate. You like to think that the people that the GOP, like the, the Mitt Romneys, are the elitist, and they're going to look out for you. They're not going to look out for them. the blue collar guy. I don't they're need not going to look out for the guy who's in the trenches, are taking gonna, hand grenades, gonna, working for a living seven days a week. They don't care about us. You can look. Look at that guy and see that you can't trust him. Oh, this is my pause. Yeah, sign. that's your pause sign. I don't. I'm not wanting an elitist. To, well, you to got do one for me. Well, you got one. You're right, Obama. He's an elitist. No, never had a job in his freaking yeah, life. It wasn't a, a draft dodger like you would got six deferments no. over there in France. No, no. Instead please. of a draft dodger, no. Please. No, this guy. He was this down. He was down. That's right. He was down trying to help people that were downtrodden. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, look over there. It's a rabbit. Hey, hey uh, we got Eric. Hey. Eric on uh, line one from Naples. Eric, what you got, buddy? J.D. and Smitty on Les Radio Show. I'm with Smitty. I'm oh, Jesus, hang up. No. <laughs> I'm with you, bro. Really... I'm with you, man. Is that all you got? You're just with them? No, I just believe that the rich people, they don't care about the poor, so why would the poor care about the rich? It's just a mind-flushing thing that the rich, oh, they care for us. They don't care for us. They're out for their money, and that's it. Screw the little guy. Well, I appreciate that, Eric. Let me, let me say something on that, uh, Sick Rick. I appreciate that. You know, the thing is, though, the, what people in a, what people have in their brain for some reason they think that the Republicans are all rich. I'm a Republican. I'm not rich. Well, I'm a small business we're, we're, owner. I employ talk, seven we're, people. We're talking about the one to two percent that we're talking about. The one here. to two percent can't. They don't. They're not going to affect you. Of course, they're not. They don't because I'm not going to vote for them. You don't. Good. Obama's part of the one percent. You're not going to vote for him then. I got a problem now. Yeah, I got to vote, vote for one of them. You better write yourself in then. I, I will. I'll do that. I'll write for them. 
Now, you like to spin things around, but the truth is that guy's right. The, the top people that have it, and, the, and they're going to they're gonna keep it. They're not going to help the people. They're not going to help. And, and by, you, by creating jobs, you mean? They won't do that. Th- by creating jobs. We tried that with Bush. When, 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 when Clinton gave his, his surplus to Bush, uh-huh. he had like $538 Thanks to the Republican billion Congress. Thank you very much. They didn't much. vote for anything. And then finally they gave it over, and what did he have? We got $11 trillion deficit when Bush left office. And that's what we had. We did have a small little issue Deficit. in September 11, Yeah, we had two wars, corruption. Now we have four wars. The whole wars. bit. You know, you, you guys like put blinders on and all the stuff that you've had, you, you pretend that it didn't happen. Like, Look oh, here. that just didn't Look, happen. See the, see the timeout signal again? Yeah. We got Chuck on the line, line two from Fort Myers, it looks like. Chuck, you there, buddy? Good morning, guys. How you doing? Good, man. Hey, set this dude straight, will you? You better be on my well, side. I debate this morning. And I, and I tell you, Smitty... You're right. We do need to take care of each other, but it's not the government's job. It's an individual's job. Amen. To take care of those around you. You start at home. You start with the family. You start with your community. You start with your church. You don't give your money to a big, huge, lumbering government that's going to take 70 cents out of every dollar and 30 cents of it's going to somehow wind up in the hands of those that need it. It's done in local communities. It's done by your churches. It's done by your family. It's done by your friends and people at work. That's the way it was meant to be. I, I believe... The more money you give the government, the more corrupt they become and the more wasteful they become. I, I believe that your premise on the churches and, and, and local people helping, that, that's true. That does need to come back. I remember the old school days, you would go to the church and you would get the, the, the food and you would get a lot of help from the church. Now you don't get a lot of that stuff Why, from a lot no, of no, the no, churches. No, 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 you do. you got to go to church to get it. No, you don't My get, church gives it. It's small percentage. But the larger problems, like like Medicare and, 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 and getting medical treatment and stuff, the churches aren't going to help you there. You need, you need hey, the thanks, government. Chuck. You need to... You need the uh, government to help people out, man. You a lot of old people too. They need some help. Oh, well, I'm sure. I mean, look at Shannon. We have we have a, a Shannon Livingston, who's our producer, um, rep, sales rep. She's had her, her son has been going through all kind of medical problems. Sure. And and he's had to go to Houston, Texas. She's on Medicare, or or I believe it's Medicare. And and she said that you know without it, her her child probably wouldn't be alive. I don't, so, I don't know what her particular medical situation is as far as the, the bills and so I'm forth. I'm saying you just can't turn your head because, you know, the government, obviously I agree the government has to be a little bit more frugal. They have to be a little bit more uh, spend conscious. They just can't go spending a ton of money. But but there are some issues here that you just can't throw the baby out with the bathwater and go, oh, we just don't want it. That's That just it wouldn't happen that way. But the, the problem is the government cannot run anything. Look at the post sure. office. They well, can't run it. I didn't say it has to be restructured. You know what the, you know what the government can run? They they can run the military okay. You know, we got the strongest. We do have a good we military. Got the strongest military we in the will world. mobilize around the world in a heartbeat. Yes, we will. And we will put them quick quickly down. So uh, you know that's what they could do well, I guess. But but that's the thing. They, they don't know how to run a business, which is really odd because a lot of the people that are in government had businesses, and um, but most of those businesses were like law firms. So I guess they didn't employ employ a lot of people because they sure don't know how to employ a lot of people now. No, they don't. I, I don't understand it. I don't know what's going on. Well, hey, we got another caller on the line. We got uh, Barbara, Barbara from Lehigh on the line with uh, JD and Smitty on Les Radio Show. What you got, Barbara? Just wondering if you intelligent men can explain something to me. Probably not. I can. Probably. Well, <laughs> let me just get your opinion then. Okay. If if Todd Aiken is saying that legitimate rape, he's an idiot. Is 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 his? Okay. Well, he he is an idiot. So explain to me what. Ryan means when he says um, rape is just another method of contraception of conception. No, oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> that, that, again, you know, he's so, he's a devout Catholic. This is, and I guess, this is the tone of the GOP. This is how they think. It's not this the is tone. those fanatical right wing scare tactic bullcrap that you guys have. Go ahead, on. He's he's Ryan speak is a, let, let the lady speak. I will. Ryan is a devout Catholic. He believes in whatever his religion tells him to believe. Uh-huh. That's I can't fault okay. the man for that. That's his he's gotta that's get, not my he's issue. He's gotta get magic underwear, issue. the Mormon magic underwear. That'll help him. Maybe if he teams up with Romney and he'll learn some more. Maybe they can both get in their underwear together. Maybe. Is, what what else uh, what else you think, yeah, Barbara, on that? Yeah, that that's just that. That you know, he's he's telling one guy to step down and leave his job because he may say unsavory comment but yet right. he can go and he can say the same thing in his own words in a different way right in a different way but mean the same thing i get what you're saying well if, I, you're, if you're pregnant you're pregnant sure. it doesn't matter if somebody knocks you in the head on the street while you're walking down the street and rapes you yeah. you're still going to have that baby that's true and, and but this this election in in 
2012. Thank you for is, calling, Colin. Yeah, thanks a lot, Barbara. It. We really appreciate it. You know, this election is so much more pol- polarizing than just that issue. You know, the, the abortion issue has been in the headlines since the 80s. I mean, since probably since before that. You probably remember it before that. I don't even know. It, it's, it's been going on a long, but a long while. this election has so much more than just abortion. This is definitely a fundamental uh, difference between two parties. And it's not just the two parties. The haves and have-nots. It has nothing to do with that because the left is just as elitist, if not more, than the right. The left has all all of what? Hollywood, all of those morons. That's what the left has. Much okay? like, much like-